morning, my friends. From the heights of my hotel. So today we're gonna explore Aleppo. That's the plan. Let's see what happens. Let's see what adventure we'll find in Aleppo with the Marotta Agency, who's driving me around in here in Syria. Let's enjoy Aleppo. So that was the headquarters of, of the rebels here in Aleppo. Wow. So the rebels were shooting from the from the windows. So we are slowly arriving in the rebel side of the city. That's the, the old. Is, uh, the left is still the old city. Oh, that's the, that's the old city. Okay. So okay, are we going around the around the old city now? So the old city was partly destroyed. Uh, partly or yeah. completely destroyed, or? I wouldn't say completely, but a uh, good part. A good part was destroyed. Okay. Uh, uh, totally no. Totally no, but. Uh, but to say a small part, it's also no. Okay, so it's a big part of the old city was destroyed. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So it looks like we are arriving at one of the doors of the old city, and you see all the well, the cemetery there, and all the destroyed part of the old city around here. It's very sad to see such a, all this history destroyed. So that's the entrance of the... One of the gates of the old Aleppo. Of old Aleppo, okay. Yeah. It's the bazaar also, hi. Yeah, it's the bazaar. <laughs> hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from Aleppo. Yeah. Yeah. So we are here in the... One of the, I think, nine doors of, uh, of the old city of Aleppo. And actually, uh, Rula explained that uh, the doors were smaller before, but uh, after the wars of the crusade, uh, they decided to rebuild the doors uh, in a much bigger scale. So that's why you have those big doors now. And uh, it should be like nine doors like that. Those doors made of steel and on the other side, and wood on the other side to resist the, the things that they use, uh, you know, the big sticks they use to break the doors. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and you can see the, the road turns and there are several doors. So, so as to make it complicated for the enemies to to enter inside, basically. And here we enter in the old city. In the, the ruins of the old city, actually. So here we have what used to be a hospital. Bimaristan, like in Persian. But it was a hospital for crazy, <laughs> for the crazy people. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Yeah. That looks like a beautiful old uh, Aleppo house. Wow. So actually that was built as a Khan and it was, uh, but then it was uh, transformed into a, an area with shops. Well, but now, now there's nothing left. Wow, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, so it's closed, yeah. Nice. So those shops are still uh, used or is they're still used because they look like uh, it's working. Oh, they wake up late. Okay. 
So basically, this place used to be a, a booming bazaar. But as you can see, all the roof is black, so everything was burned down. And uh, all the booming life, all the hustle and bustle of the Middle Eastern bazaars vanished from here. Look at that. see the citadel of Aleppo up there. So basically, uh, apparently the bazaar of Aleppo was compared to the bazaar of Istanbul before. A little bit smaller, but still it was compared to it, to the grand bazaar of Istanbul. But, uh, well, it's a bit hard to compare it with the bazaar of Istanbul now. Because the, the, well, one is still hustling and bustling, while this one is... Uh, Waiting for better times, let's say. Thousands of shops gone into smoke. So actually, people are rebuilding it now, right? Excuse me? It looks like it, it's, it's in process of being rebuilt. Yeah, this is rebuilt. Okay, there are shops alive. So basically, Rula is also explaining to me that uh, all the, a lot of the, the things that for the cushions and all that is produced is produced in Syria because they grow cotton also. So the luck they have in, in this crisis is that they produce their own food, they produce their own clothes, so they can survive on, on a lot of homemade things, basically, despite the embargo. That's probably that's the only reason why the country survives somehow, despite being cut off from the rest of the world. And now we're arriving to the part of the bazaar that is still alive, actually. People still occupy it. It was not, not completely destroyed. And, uh, there's still life here. It's good to see that Aleppo is still alive. It's early in the morning, so the shops are slowly opening up. But uh, yeah, it's very good to see life. Life in Syria. Let's continue our way down the bazaar of Aleppo. So that's the guys who rebuilt the bazaar. Let's take a photo. They don't want video, they want a photo. Hello, I take photo here. Can you hold it here? So these are the good men working to rebuild the Aleppo. It's still okay. on. It's still on. Maybe. Still on, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they're rebuilding the bazaar. So you see we are in a in the part of the of the old bazaar of Aleppo that is uh, this time 
completely destroyed and we are uh, we came back on our steps we are now on the way to the citadel which is just up there I'm gonna walk to the citadel but uh, well on the way you have wow Yeah, on the way you have uh, the very destroyed part of the bazaar, basically. This part is really completely destroyed, yeah. See all the roof is on the ceiling is, is all black from the burning. All the empty shops that will come back to life one day. See this beautiful part of the bazaar, all black from this, from the fires, all the war. But what a beautiful architecture! It's really weird to see a bazaar that was compared to the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul, destroyed completely by war. Han, oh, there is another Han here. They have really beautiful doors. So it was 99 shops in this Khan, this Karavan Sedai. And there is only one shop left. It's closed, yeah. at the one exit of the shop, of the shop, of the bazaar, of the souk, of the destroyed part of the souk. Wow. Look at this beautiful place. Some 